Okay. Hey everybody, I'm really excited. Um, tonight's Spark Studio is all about getting yourself ready for fairs and booths. Um, and what does that mean? And really getting yourself, putting your um, best foot forward at those events, but also getting the best results from them. Um, so anytime um, you work an event um, at a fair, a booth, set up a pop-up at a park, um, in your front yard, whatever, you want to make sure that you are getting the most bang for your buck and your time. Oftentimes when you're working an event, a vendor event, you have um, a cost involved, right? You have to pay for the booth fee. You have to pay for the time that you're spending, right, um, out there. Then you're not paying for it necessarily, but you you might be, right? So if you are working one of the bigger events that we split up, you're paying for a shift. If you are having to pay for the booth fee, if you're having to, um, you know, have costs involved of making sure you have tablecloths and whatever. Um, you want to make sure that you're really growing your business and not just filling your time. And I think a lot of times it can be really easy to go to one of those events and kind of just show up, right? Um, and time is money. Thank you. Time is money. And oftentimes people, you know, we show up and we just are kind of there. We're not necessarily, um, actively working it, right? We go and we're saying, yeah, we're done. Um, we're here. We, I'm at the booth, right? You might post it on Facebook and you might be standing there in body and spirit, but you might not actually be working it as best you can. And it doesn't make sense really, right? To go out there and just stand there and hope people jump in your date book. So I want to talk to you guys about how are you going to put it to work, uh, to work for you the best way because we do have the Santa Claus County Fair coming up and many of you who are on are Santa Claus County Fair workers so thank you so much um, and when, no matter what time of year it is no matter what fair or booth is coming up you want to keep all these things in mind so um, first of all people aren't going to just show up and ask for Tupperware um, and say, can I jump into your date book? I mean most of the time they don't at least sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll get one or two people that are just like super excited and they see Tupperware and they come running. But oftentimes you're, you're not going to have that. You're going to have people who need to be pulled into the booth. And so what are you, the way you look, the way you stand, the way you talk is going to make a big difference. Um, so first of all, let's talk about what to wear. Um, we want to make sure that everybody is prepared in the way they need to as far as dress. Um, so first of all, I want to show you guys, I'm going to share my screen. I posted this on our Facebook group earlier this week. Um, but I want to post to talk to you guys again. And obviously everyone on here is women right now, but men do join our team. And so I want to make sure we have the do's and the don'ts. So let's go through the men really quickly. Um, button down shirts are do's jackets, um, like a, um, sports coat type jacket in neutral colors, a tie or bow tie, nice slacks, polished loafers or oxfords. Men don't. Don't wear anything wrinkled or soiled or oversized. Don't be too fashion forward and don't wear jeans. Now I could say fashion forward you could be, but maybe not mix your polka dots and your stripes and your hot pinks with your everything else, right? You want you can have great pops of color and fashion pieces, but if you're over the top, um, you might scare some people off, right? Um, and don't wear jeans. Jeans are not business casual. Women do's wear modest blouses or sweaters. Make sure you're covered up. We aren't looking for a date or a fun night out. We're looking for Tupperware parties, right? And if you are standing at a booth and you've got your goods displayed, the women who are walking by might not want you to come to their house to do a Tupperware show because their husbands might be looking at your goods instead of your Tupperware, if you guys get my drift, okay? Tailored skirts or dress pants. And I know that seems pretty obvious, but let me just tell you. Um, modest, more tailored dresses. Um, jackets, heels or flats, not flip-flops, um, not tennis shoes, pop of color is encouraged. So don't wear all black and white, throw a little color in there, even if it's just your jewelry. 
Women's don'ts, don't show cleavage. Again, for the same reason as above, you wanna be modest. You don't wanna be, you don't want those husbands of your potential hosts to be looking at you or to be a distraction or your host to be worried about that in any way, shape or form. Don't wear skirts more than three inches above the knee. Don't wear heels over four inches high. Don't wear jeans. Again, jeans are not business casual. And don't wear chunky jewelry, really, really big chunky jewelry. Now, in today's world, jewelry has gotten a little bit bigger and a little bit flashier, but if it's too big, it's going to be a little bit overwhelming and it might distract, especially on your wrists. Um, if you're wearing really, really clunky or noisy jewelry on your wrists, when you're doing your demo and cooking, it's going to be distracting. On top of which, you might like get dangly jewelry bracelet stuff into the food or it just might seem a little odd, right? So I really suggest to wear um, simple jewelry. Like I always have a watch on so I can keep good time. You can wear like your Tupperware um, bracelets that you earn, but I try to keep it really simple um, so that you're not accidentally dipping something in their food, right? Um, <laughs> and they're, they'll think about that because they're seeing you at a booth. They want, they would probably expect that how you're dressed at this booth is how you're going to dress at their house. Um, other thing is when you're going to the, the fair, um, you don't want to wear too much perfume um, or too much makeup. Um, because well, makeup in general, we probably shouldn't overdo it, right? There's that you can get it overdone, but you want to look put together, but not overdone. Um, you want to be like a, a gal's gal, like an everyday gal. Um, too much perfume can really affect people in um, lots of different ways. We all love our own scent of perfume, but sometimes that perfume can give someone an immediate headache or really bother them. So I really suggest to keep the perfume or other odorants light. Um, also no spaghetti straps. Okay. I know it's summertime. I know it's a hundred degrees when we're out at these things, but spaghetti straps are just not professional. You can wear a wide tank or a short sleeve, but spaghetti straps, a no, no, um, no shorts, of course. Um, that should be obvious and no flip flops. I know that it's hot weather and we want to wear something that's comfortable. So get some open toed flats or you could even wear low wedges or sandals. They have these, they have really cute sandals right now that aren't flip flops that just have like a band across the toe and an ankle strap. Wear something like that. It looks a little more professional and put together, but not, um, flip flops. Um, you should always wear your apron or your name badge, so or one or the other or both, so that you or maybe your Tupper shirt if you have a Tupperware team shirt, um, and that way you stand apart from the rest of the people in the booth. So when someone walks into the booth, they know who the Tupperware lady is and who the other guests in the booth are. Um, also, your hair should be done in a sensible manner. Okay, so. I'm not saying you can't have cool, fun colors or fun hairdo by any means, but you want to have your hair done in a way that would make them feel like if this person came to my house, this is how they could, would present themselves. For example, I 99% of the time when I work at a booth, put my hair in a bun, um, just like I'm wearing it now. It's super simple or, or a low ponytail or a high ponytail too, but usually back. And the reason why is because my hair is very long. And if I'm out at a vendor event and they see me with my long hair, they might wonder how I'm going to cook with my hair down. And it is the height of a countertop. So literally if I cook, my hair will be on your counter. So my hair is always back in a nice tight bun or in a ponytail when I'm cooking. Um, you can wear your hair up, down anyway, but try it to avoid the messy look. Okay. That's pretty much the, the main thing. You want to have it brushed and you want to have it done in a nice, sensible manner. Um, makeup and nails and toes. Okay. So I mentioned makeup. Don't go overdo it. Make sure that you have, you know, lip gloss or something. And I'm not telling you have to wear makeup guys, but think about you want to look put together, not like you just rolled out of bed. So if that means for you, you put on a little eyeshadow or a little bit of mascara, lip gloss, that means you put on your full face. That's fine. But don't go crazy. Like you're going out on the evening town with your with glitter on your face, but you also want to look like you didn't just wake up. Um, toes and fingernails, okay? I like to address this because I'm not saying you have to go get a pedicure or manicure, but you do want to have clean toes and, and fingernails. So if you're not going to paint your toenails, they need to be clean and trimmed 
If you're not going to paint your fingernails, they need to be clean and trimmed, not all broken. I never paint my fingernails, you guys, ever. I think you can count on one hand how many times I paint my fingernails, but my nails are always clean and always trimmed. So people don't look at, because they look at that, you guys. You're gonna be making a first impression with people. They will look at your toes, your shoes, your fingernails, your makeup, and your hair, and your dress. And I, I hate to say that we do that, but we make a judgment about somebody within 10 seconds of seeing them. So if we're not dressing appropriately and people look at us in one way, we're going to lose clients immediately. And so even what I'm wearing right now, I guess this is a cotton t-shirt, but I have nice earrings on, right? My hair is pulled back nicely. So that looks better than if I was wearing my sloppy t-shirt and my hair all raggedy because I just got out of the pool kind of look, okay? Um, shoes, of course, easy to stand in. Again, I said no tennis shoes or flip flops, but you know, you want something that you're going to be comfortable in. So find something that's kind of mixed. I know that there's some really cute, just flats that have either closed toed or open toed that are really easy to find. Um, what you're going to want to bring with you. Okay. This is important. You want to go prepare. Now, some of the booths that you do, you're going to be setting up yourself and we're not going to talk about display until the very end. If you guys have questions about that, um, because the Stanislaus County Fair that we have coming up will be all done for you. You do not have to do anything for the display. You do not bring any product. You just need to bring what I'm going to tell you. Um, the great thing about, the one thing to know about the San Jose County Fair is that we do cover our product every evening. So when you arrive, you need to arrive about 30 minutes early for your shift at least because parking is a little bit crazy. If you don't want to pay for parking, you need to make sure you're there um, in time to get into the booth, maybe use the restroom, get yourself settled. So you want to arrive about 30 minutes early. Um, two, if you're the opening shift, you definitely have to be inside the booth by about 20 minutes before the shift starts so you can uncover everything because we cover it with um, fabric so that it's not just bare and getting dusty. And there is usually out there a couple of dusting rags. So if there is anything that looks dirty or monkey or funky, whatever, dust it off. Make sure it's clean because people are going to be coming in and touching it. You don't want to have dust on it, right? And unfortunately, well, fortunately and unfortunately, we have a booth usually that's placed right underneath the swamp cooler that makes our booth nice and cool. However, the swamp cooler dumps a bunch of gunk on our stuff, like gross, nasty stuff. So make sure you're cleaning it off throughout the shift. Make sure you're checking your buddy's hair. Cause one time I was there and I went to the bathroom and when I went to the bathroom, I, for a little quick break while my, my booth buddy was there, I found that I had like all that stuff in my hair. It looks like I had dandruff and it was just like the crap from the, 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 the thing. So check your buddy every once in a while for flakes um, from, the, from the thing. And that can happen anywhere. If you're outside at a booth, sometimes you get dust that blows in. You know, people's trash might blow into your booth if you're at an outside booth. So make sure you're keeping it tidy and clean. Um, so you want to get there about 30 minutes early. And then at the end of the shift, you want to make sure you cover everything once again and put everything back in its place. What you want to bring with you, okay, it's really simple when you're doing a booth that's already pre-set up. You want to bring your three-week calendar ready to go, already highlighted with the days that you have available to hold Tupperware parties. That three-week calendar can be found on our Ignite website and our Facebook page. Um, highlight just the days that you can party and put in there the times that you want to hold those parties. Um, don't put any X's through days. Just only highlight the ones you can. Any party, any dates that are within seven to 10 days, throw some stickers on and glittery something um, to really draw their attention. Two, you wanna bring with you lead slips. I will have some lead slips out there, but bring your own just to be prepared that way in case they run out at the shift before. Um, by the time the fair happens for us this year, I will be about two weeks prior to my due date, um, three weeks prior to my due date, and who knows if I'll be in the hospital. So I physically may not be able to get out there to replenish those things. So make sure that if you have a shift, you bring some printed lead slips with you. Um, and I, th that is also posted in their four to a page. You can just print them really easy and cut them up. Um, you'll wanna have some pens um, in case some borrows one and walks away, who knows? Um, you'll want to have some past flyers or brochures um, or business cards with your information on them. So for example, this brochure ends the day before um, our fair. So instead of throwing these in the trash, if you have extra, stick your name and info on it, 
We have a cute little label that you can print out that just says, this one's expired. It's a cute little rhyme. I don't remember what exactly it says, but it says something along the lines of, this, is, this one's expired. If you want to see a new one, give me a call. And that way, if there's just people who are walking through and wanting to have something with your information on, you can hand this out. It has great colored pictures. It gives a little information about some of the products that we have. Um, it's not just a business card that will easily get lost. Um, or if it's busy, maybe there's four or five people talking in the booth at once, they might grab one and walk away. Um, but you aren't going to be handing out brand new ones and losing money on brand new ones. You're going to be able to hand out ones, uh, those to the people who date parties. Okay. And if somebody says it, every time I hand one of these out, I just say, you know, I'm really green and I like to recycle. And this is our, our last brochure. So the prices and some of the products are not available, but our brand new catalog and sell brochure can be viewed on our website. And here's my web address right here. And if you want me to get you a new one in the mail, I'd be happy to, or if you host a show, I can get one for you too. That way it's really light and kind of like, oh, she's being green. Isn't that so sweet? Um, versus I don't hand out new ones unless you have a party because that just is mean, right? That sounds mean, but I'm saying the same thing. Um, I always bring three to five party packets already made up um, so that you can have it um, ready to go and you aren't trying to put together a party packet if someone dates a Tupperware party, okay? Um, so you wanna make sure that you have three to five of those ready to go. Now granted, at the fair, sometimes they don't wanna take the party pack home with them because they're at the fair, they don't wanna carry something, right? So you can get it all ready to go with their name and address, and if they live in town, you can drop it off on their door mat um, on your way home from the fair, or you can pop it in the mail either way. Um, you also want to bring with you um, your Tupperware Eco water bottle or two or three filled. I am requesting, actually I should say I am requiring that at this booth you have no disposable type cups. So if you stop by McDonald's for dinner on the way in and you have a big iced tea, I don't want to see that big old McDonald's cup sitting on the table at our Tupperware booth. Pour it into something else, so be prepared. Have an empty Tupperware tumbler with you or drink it all before you get in there because we are a, a reusable company and when we walk in there with a big styrofoam 7-Eleven cup or whatever, it does not, it's not a good testimony for our company, okay? So no disposable cups. I would say bring some, some packed snacks if you're afraid that you might get hungry during your um, shift and um, or money for... Um, a, a bite to eat if you want to eat fair food. They do have really, really good fair food um, as well. So you can kind of pick and choose what you want to do for that. Um, and oh, the other thing that you can bring, we don't sell anything off the booth table, of course, but what we, what you can bring is um, maybe a small basket of goodies that you would want to use as giveaways for people who date parties in clothes. So for example, you might have a basket of a couple of snack cups or um, some of the past dating gifts, anything that's little that's not current for hosting, um, or you could even do bigger depending on how badly you want parties, but something small. And if they choose one of your party dates that has a star glitters on it that's within seven to 10 days, then they get to pick a prize from your basket. And that prize will um, be set aside for them and brought to them at their party. Um, so you can do something like that, but we do not sell at the booth at all. Um, then let's talk about body language. So we talked about what to wear and what to bring. So let's talk about body language. So first of all, best thing to know is that when your arms are crossed, and I know when you're standing for a long time, it's really easy to cross your arms, but that gives a really defensive look and people are a little bit more put off by it. So your hands should be at your side. Um, they can be clasped in front of you, like down below or behind you, um, but you don't want to cross your arms. Just that's like the worst stance. Um, another thing is no eating in the booth at all. This is number, like a huge rule, you guys. Do not eat in the booth at all. You will always have a booth buddy, so you guys can take turns with breaks. There's plenty of places inside the building and outside the building to sit and eat your meal, whether it's something you brought with you or something that you purchased. Um, this is the deal. If you're eating food and you have a mouthful of food, no one wants to start a conversation with you because you're eating, right? You might be mid-chew when you're trying to talk to someone and food may or may not be seen, right? If you talk with food in your mouth. Um, 
And it's really difficult for you to start a conversation if you're mid-bite, right? Like you can't stop a customer and, and lure them in. So just plan to eat outside the booth. Um, if you have, you know, a few almonds and you throw a few in your mouth or almonds, as many of you know, um, and, and are kind of hiding in the back, okay, fine. But do not get out a plate or a big thing and be eating an actual meal, okay? No chips, nothing messy, a few nuts or a few berries, okay, fine. But otherwise, you shouldn't be eating in the booth. Um, then, smile. Okay, this is really, really, really important, you guys. It is so important to have a smile on your face. So many times when we are waiting, what is our resting face when we're waiting, right? Kind of like this, right? That doesn't look very happy. That doesn't look very involved. It doesn't look very engaging. So try to be conscious about smiling. The easiest thing, way to make yourself smile is to have pleasant conversation with whoever your booth buddy is, okay? So pleasant conversations is important. Sometimes when we get to a booth and maybe we're working with someone we really like and we start having a conversation, we start maybe complaining about our day or um, the parking situation or whatever, right? And when we're complaining, what happens to our face? Kind of like, oh my gosh, blah, blah, blah. and our face looks like this. And it doesn't matter if a customer can hear the words that you're saying, they can see the look on your face. So make sure that you leave your day outside of the booth and you come in with a smile on your face and you're ready to work and excited, okay? Um, and another great way to keep yourself happy and excited on purpose when you're in a booth is to do mini demonstrations with your buddy, okay? So many of you um, may be totally seasoned working with a brand new consultant or you might be the brand new consultant working with a totally seasoned person or you might be two newer people or you might be two seasoned people um but i always find that if you just pick up a product and practice demonstrating it okay you know it sounds kind of silly but if you don't know a ton about the products you could ask your buddy and say hey tell me about this product or vice versa and just practice and what's going to happen is a, you're going to have a smile on your face because you're going to be talking about a product that you love. Um, and B, you're going to have um, people walking by hearing you talk about these products and they're going to be interested in saying, wait, what did you just say? Fridge smart doubles and triples, but like fruits and veggies don't go bad? What? So they're going to stop and hear those words versus just you standing there hoping that they walk into the booth. Okay. So practice and then they'll put a smile on your face at the same time. Now, the goal of working these events, the end goal is not to get sales, okay? Never, ever, ever is the end goal to get sales. The end goal is to get parties and new recruits. That is always your mission at these events, okay? Because if you're going out there and you are paying for a booth, let's say you paid $100 to work a booth. Now, the Santa Claus County Fair, we all know we paid less than that, but let's say you paid $100 to work a booth for one day or even $50. If you go out there and you make $50 in sales, you've made, okay, let's see, what's profit on $50? $12.50. So you'll have made $12.50, right? Yeah, $12.50 for the day if you sold $50 in Tupperware. If you spent $50 on the booth and all you did was sell $50 in Tupperware and you got $12.50 back, did you really do what you needed to do, right? Not really. And so, then, and then you're done. But if you go out there and you date one Tupperware party and you go to that person's house and you have a $500 party, a standard party, you're making $125 back. Is it worth your time then? Yep. Even if it took you three weeks to get that party dated or four weeks or five weeks, right? So if you go out there and focus on party dating or if you have a new consultant who signs up, you're going to be making money at the grand opening. You're going to be earning the say yes and the activation offer. There's so much that you get. So that should be your mission. So are you talking that way at your meetings or at your booths? Or are you talking about, oh, do you want to see a catalog? And that's about it, right? So let's talk about the top of the mountain theory, okay? Now, let me ask you guys, and if you, one of you wants to unmute and just shout it out, you can. But is it easier to climb down a mountain or to climb up a mountain? Someone's pointing down. 
It's easier to climb down a mountain than climb up a mountain. Right? Don't you think? It's easier to climb down a mountain than climb up a mountain. And I agree. You can roll down a mountain. Amen, sister. You can roll down a mountain. That surely is easy. You can take a, a sled down a mountain. Gravity does it for you. There's no extra effort. Now, do you have to watch your footing still? Yes. But climbing up a mountain is hard work on your body. It is hard work. And your, your breath gets shorter as you get higher up in elevation. And if you're going down the mountain, you're almost like the gravity kind of makes you run down almost. And the only thing you have to watch out for is your footing. But there's no extra effort exerted. You're just kind of like trickling down the hill. And the same is true when you're offering the Tupperware information, okay? If you start at the bottom, which would be like, oh, do you want to see a catalog? And they say yes. And you say, oh, okay, yeah, our catalog's so awesome. And you pull it out and they kind of start paging through it and they say, oh, I didn't know Tupperware had changed colors. And they're like, yeah, it's really cool. Did you see the house kit? They get this huge set of Tupperware for free. You should have a party because it's so much fun. Oh, yeah, I hadn't thought about that. That is a really nice set is their response. And you say, oh my goodness, if you love that, you should join Tupperware because you can get it all for free then. Suddenly, so you're climbing up the mountain, right? You're starting as a, um, just being a customer and then seeing the, the catalog to posting because they're showing a little more interest and now they're showing even more interest. You're like, maybe they should sign up. And suddenly your customer is hiding from you. They're like backing away and they're kind of like, oh yeah, okay, I'm going to go now because they're freaking out because you just kind of threw up on them, right? You gave them too much information all at once and they're like, why is this crazy person? I just said that I like the colors and now suddenly I should be a consultant. I don't understand the connection. We do because we love product, right? But they don't. So you have to make sure that you climb down the mountain. If the, if you, if someone comes into your booth and you're just talking with them and you offer them the Tupperware opportunity, oh my goodness, I love what I'm doing these days. I just joined Tupperware X amount of time ago and I'm having so much fun teaching people how to save time and money in their kitchen. Is that something that you might be interested in making money doing? Okay, now if they say no thanks, you can move to, oh gosh, you know, I totally get that. You could always post a show and just see what's new and get it all for free, right? So now you've gone down a little bit. And if they still say no, you can get to the customer. And pretty soon they're going to agree because they're really soon like, phew, she's not going to bug me, right? Um, now granted, will you go back to those and revisit them? Yes. But you want to make sure that you're going down that mountainside. Um, and then you want to talk about word choices and how do you really draw people in? Um, you don't want to attack people, right? As they're walking by and say, oh, you should come into the booth right now. It's so great because then they're going to hide, right? Um, you don't want to just stand there and hope that they come in and ask you for information or ask to host a party. It doesn't happen very often. Um, you want to make sure that you are very, very on purpose with what you're saying and that you know what kind of party you're going to offer or what kind of recipes you're going to talk about to really get people interested in getting together with you again. So when you're at these events, one of the great ways to invite people in is just say, to say something like, oh my goodness, have you seen what's new in Tupperware recently? Come on over check out this product, something like that. Or, hey, I really love your blouse. Um, I mean, do genuine, genuine um, compliments, but I really do try to compliment people as they go by because people love compliments and they're gonna stop and talk, okay? So if you can find something about them that you really like, or maybe they have kids with them and you can um, say, oh, hey, your kids are super cute. How old are you? And talk to their kids a little bit, then they have to pause and then they can come into the booth. So you want to do something catchy, but not pushy and over the top. Um, we are not allowed to scout for customers either. So you can't leave the booth and like go talk to people out there and tell them to come to your booth. Um, so just make sure that you are staying in the booth and offering people to come by. Um, you don't want them to keep walking around your booth because you're shouting at them, right? And telling them to come over. So you want to be really inviting. Um, ask them questions like, oh, hey, I see that you are carrying a water, Tupperware water bottle. When did you get that? How long ago was that? Um, just try to start conversation with them in a nice way. Um, you also want to make sure that when you're talking with them, you ask a lot of questions. You want to get to know them more so than you want 
to tell them about our product. Because if you don't ask questions, and let's say someone comes over and they're looking at the product and you get them to come in the booth, and they're kind of just looking at things, and um, you see them pause in front of, let's say, the micro program, okay? Um, and you walk and you say, oh my gosh, this is our micro pro grill. It's super amazing. It grills chicken and fish and shrimp. It's so delicious. And the person you're talking to is vegetarian or vegan. And they're like, uh, yeah, I don't care about that. They will walk away because you didn't ask them. Okay. So it's really important that when you're at these events to ask more questions and learn more about the customer than you are telling them about the product. Okay. They know Tupperware is the best of the best. They don't need to be told that, right? They, they know that because they call every piece of crapperware in their house Tupperware. Y'all, they all do. Okay. Two, they don't need to be convinced that our product um, works necessarily right now. We don't want to, to overwhelm them with too much information because then why do they need to come to a party or why would they want to have a show, right? You want to make sure that you give them you want to get to know them so you can find what fits their need. So you can ask a lot of questions. Excuse me. Like, did you know questions? And have you seen questions? Have you heard? Okay, so let me give you some examples. Like, um, did you know that um, Tupperware has some new products to help you save time and money in the kitchen? Where do you, so, so here's the question. Now, I could immediately start talking about Fridge Smart. I could immediately start talking about Vent and Serve, right? But instead, I would say something like, oh, did you know that Tupperware has some really great products to help you save time and money in the kitchen? Tell me, where do you feel that you lose the most money in your kitchen when it comes to food? They might say, oh, like I threw away so much fruits and veggies, or uh, we eat out every single night, or we're always doing frozen meals and it's so expensive, okay? So you're gonna, now I just learned something. So I take that down. I may not know their name yet, but on my blank lead slip, I write down frozen meals or veggies, because I know that's what she, they, they need the most help with. Um, then I might say, oh, my name's Alyssa, by the way. What's your name? And I write their name down. Are you here in town? or are you out of town? Okay, so I'm not asking them for their address. I'm not saying, what's your address? I'm saying, are you in town or are you out of town? And then I say, oh, I live right here in town. Oh, right here in Turlock, what's so great? Or I live out of town. Oh, how far? And they'll say, oh, I live in Ceres. I live in Modesto, I live in Escalon, whatever, right? They're gonna tell you where they live. Put that on the address line, right, on the city. Now you know their city. Then I might continue talking. Oh, so tell me, you. Now you said you throw away lots of fruits and veggies. What is like the one veggie that just drives you crazy? Your fruit. And they're going to tell you, it's my strawberries or it's my whatever. And then you can pick up Fridge Smart and say, have you heard of Fridge Smart before? So again, all questions, right? I'm not saying, oh, we have Fridge Smart. It does this. I'm saying, oh, have you heard of Fridge Smart? This is what it can do for you. And then hand it to them. This is so, so important, you guys. They cannot leave your booth if they're holding Tupperware. They can't. They're trapped. They have to keep talking to you. <laughs> so I hand it to them and then I start talking about it. And I get them to play with it and hold it and feel it, right? And then I kind of stand between them and where it goes so they can't set it down because they won't set it down where it doesn't go. It's really funny, but it's true. And then you're going to continue having a conversation with them. Find out more about their family. So tell me about your family. How many kids do you have? None? One? Seven? How old are they? What are their fun things to do? Okay. You want to form them. Okay. So as you're starting a conversation, you're going to use what's called form. And it's F-O-R-M. And this is what it stands for. Family. Occupation. Recreation. And message. Okay, so family would be, like I just said, oh, how many kids do you have? Are these all of your kids? I mean, depending on what they've got with them, they might be alone, they might not be, whatever. Um, how old are they? So I like, to, I, I like to ask a very broad question and then really specific questions because people like to ask, like to talk about themselves. So I'll say, oh, how many kids do you have? Very broad, right? Oh, tell me their ages, a little more specific. Boys or girls, even more specific. Oh, what do they like to do for fun? Even more specific, okay? If I don't notice a wedding ring, I might say, gosh, single mom or full, you know, tell me about 
your husband or what do you do for a living, right? Now I'm going into occupation. Oh, so are you at home during the days or do you work outside of the home? Okay, do you work at home or outside of the home? It's very important to word it that way because a lot of people work from home nowadays. So do you work from home or do you work outside of the home? Oh, what do you do there? Do you like it? Do you have to commute? Okay, so really broad and then really specific. Is your husband home too or your boyfriend? Oh, single mom, oh my gosh, I was a single mom. Try to relate to them a little bit, okay? Um, recreation, well, what do you guys like to do for fun? I know you said your kids have baseball games. Is that something fun that you guys do as a family? Like go visit, like go to the games and cheer them on or, you know? And um, then they'll start talking more, right? Then um, message, okay? So now that I've compiled all this information and oftentimes I'm compiling this information while I'm telling them about a particular product line. Like, oh my gosh, with that many kids, have you, there is this fabulous stack cooker, da, 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 whatever product it is that we might be standing near if they haven't picked one up yet. Um, and then I kind of am going into the message and I always offer, again, that opportunity. So, you know, with somebody that you're talking to, you can just say, gosh, have you ever considered doing something like this so you can make some extra money on the side, get your Tupperware for free, and be able to um, pay for, like, I know you said you had a senior and a junior. That's a lot of ex extra expenses you're probably not used to. Um, have you thought about doing something like this to help pay for those things? They'll likely say no, or maybe I've done it in the past, or whatever. And then you just keep having a conversation with them. If they say no, don't just say, oh, okay, and be done. Say, oh, why haven't you ever thought of this before? And then they'll tell you. Say, gosh, you know, I know a lot of people have misconceptions about this kind of business because of X, Y, Z. Like they might think that you only get free products and not get paid, but we do get paid or whatever. Okay. So you want to kind of, you just, the biggest thing you guys is to have a conversation. Pretend like there's somebody you really care about and really want to help in the world. And when you do that and you take your business cap off and you put your caring cap on, you will get fabulous leads, not just okay leads, but fabulous leads. I did a, a little booth a couple weeks ago. Um, it was, I think it was Mother's Day weekend, if I remember correctly. And, um, or the weekend after, I don't remember. Anyway, I did this little booth. Someone came up and I just got to talk to them about their kid that they were holding and their family and da 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 and just having conversation. And we ended up dating a party and it was a $900 party. We're not friends on Facebook. She's texted me like four times since her product came in to help her make dinner and she's super excited. I mean, me and her are gonna be friends. And I, and she's just a host, just a host. She's someone who I met at a fair who I never had met before. Never, ha I have nothing in common with her other than we have children. That's it. <laughs> Basically, her life is totally different than my life. Um, but we totally bonded over just a conversation. And now she's a good, I really see her as somebody who's going to become one of my good friends. And um, it's super funny how things like that happen, right? So even if she never becomes one of my super, super close friends, she's someone I definitely care about. And I want to make sure that she's having healthy meals for her family. So do I respond to her text messages when she's asking how to make something? Absolutely. Do I want to um, be friends with her on Facebook and on Instagram and all that? Absolutely. Right. Um, so I want you guys to think about that when, when you're at an event, are you caring about them or are you caring about what you can get from them? Because if you care about them, you're going to get the best leads ever. Best leads ever. Um, so I am going to, and then, oh, here's another tip when you're taking down notes. Okay. So I have my little lead slip and I've been taking notes about our conversation, whatever. I might say, Oh, I want to make sure I can text you. I always say, can I text you, um, the next new sale flyer or whatever. And then I can say, Oh, your number is 209. And then finish this, they'll finish the number for you. Um, if you say, can I text you the next new sale flyer? They usually will say yes, because they don't mind if they get a text with the next sale flyer. And then if you write it down or if you just program it right into your phone, you're going to get their information versus them feeling like you're, what's your phone number, right? You're, you're, it's a totally different approach. If you say, what's your phone number? They're feeling like they need to hide their information. If you say, hey, is it okay if I text you the new sale brochure? Yeah, okay, what's your number? 209, right? Um, and then um, the other thing is when they walk away, I write down as much as I can remember about them. So for example, they uh, get to me and they say, 
or they walk away, I'll write down everything I can remember. So I would write down um, little boy named Henry, about nine months old, where mom was wearing the baby on a pack. Um, husband had bit a big beard. Um, he was really engaged in the conversation. That, like I write down everything I can remember about them. Works at Sutter, da 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 da. Okay, because then when she walks away, and I go to call them the next day, I remember who they are. Because you'll meet 15, 20, 30 people in a, in a time span working at one of these events. And you won't remember if Nina was the gal who told you about her weight loss or if Nina was the gal with seven kids. You won't remember. You will not remember because you talked about Fridge Smart with both of them and that's written on their thing. And you remember you talked about Fridge Smart to both of them, but you can't remember which one's which. So if you get on the phone with Nina who has a weight loss journey and has never had kids and you say, Nina, how are your seven kids doing? She might hang up the phone on you. Okay. So you want to make sure that you are, yeah, she's giving me a thumbs up because that's what she would do. So you want to make sure you remember your people by writing notes and you guys, it's down to hair color. If they had, a, if they were eating a, one of those giant pickles from the fair, I write that down. Like I write down everything I can remember about them as they walk away, because then I know I'll remember who they are, right? Any little detail you can remember. If they had really strong perfume, if they were wearing really cute shoes, I mean, anything I can do to remember them, I write it down. And it's not about judging. It's about memory, memory. Okay. Um, so you just want to have that all all down so it's really easy to remember when you do your callbacks. Last thing you need to know about working one of these events, 10% of interest is lost every single day, 10%, okay? So if they come up to your booth and you have a conversation with them and they're 70% interested, they're not 100%, they're not like signing up for a party on the spot, but they're 70% interested, they might have a party down the road, but they definitely wanna see a catalog and probably really wanna place an order, right? That's a pretty hot lead. The very next day, their interest level has bought, dropped down to 60% already. The next day, 50, okay? Day one, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10%. By one week out, they don't even remember they talked to you at the booth. Don't remember, okay? So how long are you waiting to follow up with your leads? It should be 24 hours or less. It should be in those first two days when they're most excited and they remember talking to you. If you wait till day seven, they're not even gonna remember that they talked to you. And I have, I am the perfect example of that in real life. I went to the Stanislaus County Fair, which is in the middle of July, you guys, has always been, has not changed. So before I started selling Tupperware, I went there as a guest at the fair. I see the Tupperware booth and I'm one of those gifts that people do not get very often at the fair. And I ran up to the booth practically. I was like, oh my gosh, I love Tupperware. This is wonderful. I can't wait. I, can I have a catalog? I want to have a party. I was so excited. I said, I want to have a party. Gave the gal my name and number. I want to have a party. Call me. I never heard one word from her. She never called. I don't know why she didn't call. I don't know if she lost my phone number. I, she didn't give me a catalog. I know that much because I would have called her. Um, she did not um, really engage in a conversation, but I popped up to her and said, I will have a party. I want to have a party. I don't know when, but I will have a party. And she um, got my name and number, never called me, never, nothing, not one bit of information. I don't know why, but she did it. Then come, let me think. December. It was December. So that was July. Almost six months later, my mom's really good friend has a Tupperware party and I show up as a guest because I'm so excited about Tupperware. And so I'm going to go and I'm going to buy my stuff and I'm there and I can't buy everything that I want. So I decided to have a party and I was kind of hesitant. I wasn't sure, but I did have a party. So I could get some of it for free. Had my party and at my party, I decided to sign up as a new consultant. And I would say probably around March or so, um, I was wanting to get on the phone and date some new parties as a consultant. And back then our lead slips were double ply, right? Like they were, um, carbon copy type style. And so I got a copy and my business leader at the time got a copy or not. I, the gal who worked the booth, she got a copy and the business leader got a copy. So in March, my business leader pulled out a stack of 
the carbon copies from the fair and said, why don't you try these? This consultant's no longer selling Tupperware. Why don't you try to give some of these leads a call and see if they can be serviced? And I said, okay. And guess whose name did I find in the middle of that pile? My name. And it said, wants to have a party right on there. And nobody called me. Okay. I didn't, and I looked at that. This is no joke. I looked at that lead slip and I said to myself, when did I go to the fair? Like I had to look at the other ones cause she didn't date that one. I had to look at the other ones in the stack to see when this happened. It's like, Oh, that was in July. Did I go to the fair in July? And I thought about it, like, okay, yeah, I was at the fair in July. I guess I did kind of stop at that booth. Like, I had to remember that I had even been to the fair. Six, that's six months later, you guys. And it was me who was there asking to have a party. Okay, so if you don't follow up with these leads right away, you definitely lose business. I promise you, you lose business. And even if you get... Um, an answering machine or whatever, or no response or no callbacks. I promise they're getting those messages. They might just be busy. Okay. I've worked booths where I've left somebody who said, oh, I want to have a party when they come up or through conversation, I get out of them that they want to have a party and it can take me three months to get that party dated, but they still do. I do not stop calling until they tell me not to. Now, do I call them every single day? No. Do I threaten them? No. Do I get frustrated when they don't call me back? No. It's not their job to call me. It's my job to call them. So if I can't get a hold of somebody, um, I just say, hey, it's just me checking in again. And we'll do more training on how to follow up later. But I want you to remember that it is your job to follow up, not their job. And they may not be calling you back for who knows what reason. It's not personal. It's never personal. It's never because they changed their mind about temper, at least not I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, the reason why a, a lead isn't calling you back isn't because they changed their mind about Tupperware or because they think that you aren't um, good enough or whatever. 99.9% .9 of the time, it's because someone's in the hospital or it's back to school or they're on vacation or they forgot about whatever financial responsibilities and they want to have their party when they have a lot of money. Whatever it is, it's never about you. So don't take it personally because it's not about you. Something going on in their world. Same thing if you give someone a phone, uh, call somebody up and they kind of are short with you and they hang up. They probably have company at their kitchen table or they have someone who just rang the doorbell. Okay, so don't, don't take it personally if somebody kind of blows you off. It's most of the time that they're not blowing you off. Now, sometimes you get that funky person who um, said yes at the booth and changed their mind. Yeah, but who cares? Who's next, right? Find that next person that's excited. So I hope that tonight's class has really helped you guys with what to do, words to say, get yourself ready for this uh, fair that's coming up um, or any event that you do because you want to go there actively working. So I am going to stop the class, stop recording.